Morning again, CYM. Man, y'all loving on each other since like y'all ain't seen each other since last year. Uh, just a couple of um, pastoral emphasis, real quick. Uh, we do want to encourage everyone to please stay in after service because we do got James Cafe in the back. You probably already smell it already. Walk past it and everything. Um, we really, really encourage you to stay because um, it's a treat. Not only that you get blessed by those that are preparing food as far as going into those different businesses, but you also get to meet new people within the church because doing Sunday morning is not really set up for you to really get to know people on a personal level. It means you more after church and when you're talking to people, you get to know people a little bit more. People get to cut up a little bit and everything. So I encourage you to please stay in after service for James Cafe. But also, um, another thing that I want to just uh, bring to everybody's attention is I um, want to give thanks to everyone. If you was here on Watch Not Service, just from Pastor Blue himself, he wanted to give so much credit to CYM as far as the hospitality that we showed to him and his church family. And so on behalf of myself and also Pastor in his absence, I want to just thank everyone from the kitchen to everybody that was here. They did a good job for us on Watch Night Service. Amen. Amen. So that is out the way. So we'll go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right. So um, if everyone, if you please stand on your feet real quick. We'll go into this word. This should be a familiar um, passage of scripture for a lot of us. Uh, for some, if this is your first time hearing it, that's cool. Uh, we're going to walk through this uh, really thoroughly on today. So if you just turn to me to Psalms chapter 1, we'll be looking at verses 1 through 3. When you get that, say amen. All right. The reason is this is how blessed in the vocabulary here of CYM, we basically say how instructed is the man a woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners nor sit in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he meditates day and night and I key verse number three he will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in its season and his leaves does not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. Amen. You be seated. Based on today to open up this new year, the title of this sermon is basically, Are You Planted? Quotation marks, lean with it. Just stay when we'll get to that part at the end, but just stay with me as we walk through this, all right? So, as we closed out 2019, as pastor has been preparing us everywhere from November the 1st, from our anniversary up to last week, he's getting us prepared or are we already into this phase of the 2020 of accelerated vision. And with this mandate has been placed on us on this church, God has something in store for each and every last one of us, for us as a ministry and you individually. And with that being said, there's going to be a push like never before that you will ever feel in God in 2020. So if you're not ready to go, I would advise you to go ahead and buy this ticket and jump on this train. Because God is very strategic in everything that he does. You see that from pastor, every message that he's presented to us on every Sunday has been positioning us to get to this point where God is saying, now it's time for you to accelerate. And basically, if you don't know what acceleration basically means, meaning mean taking something that is stationary and moving it fast. And a lot of times it's not necessarily you moving the object. God is saying, I'll move the time. So the time that it would take you to normally accomplish a thing, God says, if you stay planted within me, I'll move the time so that you get it faster than what you would normally would. 
So everything that pastor has preached here from his sermon two weeks ago when it says God is with us, Emmanuel. It says that understand that there are times when God must remove us from people, from your life, because at this next stage of your life, they may not be able to get there with you. And it doesn't mean that you forget about them. It's just they can't handle this next level of your life. And then on last week when he had the message of the creed, basically meaning saying for us to succeed in this place, you must understand the language of the place. Knowing the language allows for relationships to form. And it also reveals your understanding of that place. So as we enter into 2020, when January the 1st hits, God is saying, hey, you're in a new place. You need to understand the language that is being spoken in this new area. As Pastor stated it last week, even on your job, everybody has a language. If you want to be a supervisor or a manager or whatever they may call it, or you may want to run your own business, you have to understand the language of the people that are already there. If you come in there speaking foreign, you're not going to get what you're supposed to be getting because nobody can understand what you're trying to relate to them. That's me going over to Mexico speaking English in a country that's primarily Spanish. Or me going to Brazil that speaks Portuguese and me trying to speak Spanish to them thinking that, oh, because I'm in South America, they speak Spanish. No, in Brazil, they speak Portuguese, which is a different accent. So me trying to communicate with them, everything is a brick wall. So in this year, 2020, God is saying, know the language. And so as we come into this here, the world that we live in is built on instant gratification. As the title stated, are you planted? And what I mean by that is that our culture, our society, our world has been turned upside down because of the access of if I don't like something, I will move from it quickly because there's other options available. And so that has impacted relationships because people feel in a relationship, hey, if it's not going the way that I think it should go, I'm out of here. And it's also affected businesses. Everybody in here has a cell phone. Everybody in here probably had cable or you probably cut your cable because you had another option. And now all those options give you the first thing they tell you is, hey, you don't have to have a contract with us. You can come and go as you please. So what it does, it creates no brand loyalty to the, to the thing that you have because you can come and go as you please. Because when you have too many options, you have the liberty to flip flop back and forth to whatever seems feasible for you at the moment in time. We have built the situation where there's no stick to if that's a word, in a situation. If you feel any type of resistance, you're gone. Because right now, how many of y'all don't have cable? Okay, pretty much everybody has a streaming service. So you got Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, whatever. You got a broken or jailbroken fire stick, whatever. You know, whatever it may be. Whatever allows you to get the show that you need to see on a regular basis is what you got. But before all of this came into place, you was locked in certain situations. Either you didn't have cable at all, and it was strange when people came over your house, or you had satellite, or you had cable. In this area, you had charter, or you had AT&T, or DirecTV, or you had DISH. Those are the main carriers that you had. But because the environment changed us as customers us as consumers made a demand is like hey i don't want to stay here so let me find a different option because if you do something that i don't like i'm out of here and so all of that mindset that mindset as a whole has trickled its way into all areas of our lives into our lives personally because now with people that are dating, you're single, you have all these different options that come at you on Internet and everything. You have all these social media sites, everybody DMing each other and they direct message boxes and stuff. You're getting all kind of crazy stuff. There's so many different options for you to choose from. If you choose to. But it's also affected the church as well. Because the moment resistance happens to you in church. All right, I'm out. I'm going to another church. 
oh, I didn't get the position in the church that I thought I should get. So I go somewhere else and try to get it there. And so I bounce from church to church to church to where, you know, every pastor. You know, every word. But you have nothing inside of you because you haven't set yourself down long enough for anything to be to stay with you so that you be able to grow. That's how we're living our lives. And God sees that and he's saying, look, I can't do nothing with you when you keep bouncing from place to place to place to place. Because honestly, like I'm I'm, I'm going to go ahead and break this myth that a lot of people have. Like I'm a millennial. If you are, I'm saying right now, if you was born in 1980, 81 to 97, 98, you are a millennial. So if you got teenagers right now, 15, 16 years old, they ain't millennials. They're centennials or post millennials, whatever you want to call it. Generation Z, whole lot of different phrases. I'm a millennial, meaning that on a job, most millennials have changed jobs 14, 15 times before they found the one that they wanted to have. Now, for those that are older than us, if you was Generation X, if you was born in the 70s, things like that, you know, baby boomers and stuff, your job history is kind of clean. You might have one or two jobs. You might have just had one job. But you've been there for 40, 50 years. Millennials ain't having that. We might be at a spot 10 years, but after that first year, we're trying to get in, in a management position because we don't have enough in us to say, hey, this is where I'm staying because everything has been given to us. And so we're able to move a lot faster, which has changed the business world altogether. Any of y'all that are in HR and all that stuff like that, you see that all the time. Resumes come through. You looking at it is like, man, you got 15 pages of job history. But the thing is that that type of movement within us is not getting us to where God wants us to go. You can't get to the next level of God if you keep moving place to place. Because when you read through the Bible, God is a God of that. He says, I'm going to pour out a blessing. Meaning that it's stationary. God didn't say I'm a spray a blessing everywhere. He says, I'm going to pour out it, but meaning that you got to be in position where you should be at so that you can receive it. Now, if you're moving from place to place, God said, I'm not going there. I'm here. So if you want it here, you need to come here. No different if any of y'all, they got children. When you tell them to come, you don't go to them. You say, come here. And if you're mad about it, you only going to say it one time. I'm going to tell you one time, come here. Because if I do got to come get you, you ain't going to like the end result. God's the same way. If I got to come get you, you're not going to like the result that you're going to receive. So our God is a God of pouring in one particular direction. This is not your water hose at your house when you're washing your car. You're just spraying it all over the place. He's like, no, this is a directional pouring. And so when we look at this, all of this is getting us to the point where God is saying, you got to know where you're planted. You have to understand where you are in this thing with God. Because I want you to look at this quote real quick. Um, Ms. Tenney, if you can put this up here. This quote is by Christine Kane. It says, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried. But actually, you've been planted. And if you can go to Galatians 6 and 9 real quick, Ms. Tina. says, let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. And so basically that quote in this scripture is basically saying this, is that a lot of us have felt that God has turned his back on us. You have felt that you've been in a dark place. You felt like everything around you, everybody else is getting what they're getting, but God is like, just forgot about you. But as that quote was saying is that you have to understand there's a difference between being buried and plant it. When you bury something, it's dead. All of us have been to a funeral. We never said, hey, we're going to plant them in the ground. It's a burial. It's a final resting place. Nothing else is coming from this. And so God is saying, don't get it misconstrued. I didn't bury you. I planted you 
in the place that you needed to be in because when the time comes, you will reap the harvest from it. But you got to allow for that time to occur. You can't go and uproot it prematurely. When you do that, you damage the plant that is trying to grow. Because you got to understand, there's a difference between uprooting something and repotting something. Now, I, I don't grow flowers or anything. My mom does. I can take care of yard. But I understand to the fact of that when you repot something, that means that it has outgrown the environment that is already in. And so now you have to move it into another space so that it can grow even more. When you uproot something, you cause trauma to that plant because you rip it from its environment either prematurely or you just haphazardly do it. And so when you try to replant it somewhere else, it, nine times out of ten, it will end up dying because of the trauma that you caused it. God is saying we have been doing that to ourselves for a long time. And you wonder why things ain't growing in your life because God's saying you have been uprooting things that I've been trying to grow in you for years. And so instead of you allowing me to repot you in another environment, you thought upon yourself because you felt that you knew more than I did that it was your time to go. So it's no different than you being at your mama house when you getting ready to graduate high school, all that stuff like that. It's getting to a time where you say, hey, it's time for you to repot yourself to, hey, you got to get on up out of here. You know, you got to stretch out a little bit. That's why a lot of times when uh, kids and stuff come back from college and everything, parents have to kind of rein it back. It was like, hey, hey, you ain't in college. You here. Don't lose your privilege here to where you can't come back here. So we can let you sprout your wings and all that as you want, but understand, this is my house. When you in college, that's you, but when you come back here, these are the rules. And so God is saying, don't uproot yourself prematurely because you can kill off the very thing that not only will help you catapult your life, but those that are connected to you. Because as we always say, your vision should be bigger than you. And if you prematurely remove yourself because you felt that God is not moving fast enough, your vision is not able to be caught by those that are coming behind you. And that's a tragedy because now your family has to pick up the pieces from where you left off at and start all over again. And so you wonder, if you wonder why we can never get to the next level in economics or anything like that, it's because the next generation has to come in and pick up the pieces from the previous generation. Amen? Amen. So as we go into this scripture, Psalms 1, 2 and 3. When you look at these three verses and we'll talk about this, if you come out of the Bible study on Wednesday, we'll really walk through those first two verses that lead into the third verse. But God is really what he's doing. This is actually David writing this. And David is writing is basically giving you an illustration or inside look at how God is stating how or what will happen with this instructed person if they do what God has called them to do. Because when you get into verse three, it says that he will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water. And when you stop writing, when you think about that, David is writing inspired by the Holy Spirit, saying that I will be you will be like a tree planted by the streams of water. That water, those streams basically means resources. God is saying, I'm trying to position you. I'm trying to plant you in an area where you got resources coming to you from all areas. Because when those resources come, it tells you on the next part of that verse, it says that fruit will be produced. The resources come so that you can produce fruit. Many of us have gotten resources in the past, but you never produced anything because we consumed them ourselves. It should be a transfer type of event. I get resources so that I can produce something so that it'll be a benefit to others. Because the more fruit that I produce, the more people that I can reach. And the more people that I reach, the more influence I get. 
That's the reason why you have a person like Jeff Bezos, the owner of, C of Amazon, who is the richest man in the world, is because he touches everybody. The man has did so much to now he has the United States Post Office delivering his packages. Because he touches people. He takes resources, uses them to create a fruit that people want and need to create more opportunities, not only for himself, but his business, to where now he's affecting all forms of trade. Because you would never thought in a million years that a U.S. post office service would be delivering another competitor's packages. But he did it. And so when you think about this fruit, it got me thinking about this in, when you look in Matthew 21, 18 and 22, this is Jesus talking. It says, now in the morning when he was returning to the city, he became hungry. Seeing a long fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it except leaves only. And he said to it, no longer shall there ever be any fruit from you. And at once the fig tree withered. Seeing this, the disciples were amazed and asked, how did the fig tree wither all at once? The reason why that scripture is so important with Psalms 3 is this, is because it says in Psalms 3, it says when you're planted by the rivers of water, the streams that are producing a resource for you, you're a producer of fruit in your due season. Jesus is walking hungry, sees a fig tree from the distance, walks up on it because he sees that it has leaves, meaning that it's the season for it to produce something. When he gets to it, there's nothing there. And so when he gets there, he realizes there's no fruit for me to have. And so he curses it and it withers up and there's nothing else there. And so what it's basically trying to tell us is that when you are planted in your right place, you will produce fruit because the worst place for you to be is be somewhere that you're not producing. From a distance, it looks like you're producing. But when people get up on you, they see that there's nothing there. You was more talk than action. That is the worst feeling to be to lead people somewhere that you can't produce nothing when you get there. And so God is saying in this verse, in verse three, and when Jesus demonstrated in Matthew 21, it was like, look, don't get trapped with trying to look good versus being good. You have to understand that you got to produce fruit in your due season. There are seasons in your life where you will produce. There are seasons in your life where you're basically are not. But don't get to that point where you should be doing something. And when people come to you looking for something, there's nothing there. That's not the type of God that we serve. And God is saying, look, I need you in this year. I need you to start understanding that you need to start producing. 2010 of 2019. OK, it's, it came and gone. It's a wash. That's history. This is a new year. God said, hey, if you messed it up, then you got another chance now. Amen. And so I'm going to be honest with you. Every time that I looked at this particular verse. I always thought of this tree right here. Let's see you put that up. This is basically a picture of an oak tree. When I always read this particular scripture, I always thought that it was talking about an oak tree because oak trees are huge. They're imposing. Everybody likes oak trees because they give a lot of shade. All of us, you know, you was a kid. You didn't have nothing else to do. You take acorns and throw them at each other. All kinds of crazy stuff. But when I started doing my research on this, and start really looking at the scripture itself and looking at the basically looking at the context of when it was wrote, who wrote it, where they wrote it and the time that they wrote it. Oak trees are not very prevalent. In Israel, now they are there, but they're more inclined to the mountain areas of Israel. The type of tree that David is talking about is actually these. Let me put that up, Miss Tina. Palm trees. Now, how many of y'all have been to a tropical area? Vacation, Florida, it don't even matter, wherever it may be at. 
when you see palm trees, you, you automatically get happy because you know you're going somewhere where there's sunshine, there's relaxation, all of that. This is what David is talking about in Psalms 3. He's talking about a palm tree because palm trees were more prevalent in the area than oak trees were. Well, what also I like about what David was doing is that when you read through this, because we actually going to go through a little bit of a botany class right quick. If you don't know what it is, it's a study of plants. Basically, this is what it is. The reason why it's not an oak tree that he's talking about and it's a palm tree is because the characteristics of both of them. The characteristics of an oak tree, the reason why it's not that is because for one, yes, oak trees do grow in Israel. But they only grow in the mountain areas because there's less wind that blows in those areas. Also, the reason why it's not a oak tree is because of the root system of an oak tree. All of us in here are scared to death. If you got an oak tree in your yard and there's a bad storm coming. You praying with everything in you like, God, please don't let that oak tree fall this way. If that bad boy lean in a certain way, it was like, just let it lean the other way from my house or my car, whatever it may be. I don't care if you let it block the road, but don't let it hit my house. Because oak trees don't take bad weather really well. The reason why they can't take bad weather really well is because their roots only go 18 inches down. So you're looking at about a foot and a half. Also, the reason why they don't take weather really well is because when you do see an oak tree, their roots shoot up off the ground and they go in different directions. And so they're not really anchored, even though they are as big as they are. They're not really anchored as deep as they should be. And we have taught you over and over again that. Anytime you see a building being built, the tall as the building is, the deeper the foundation has to be. But with oak trees, an oak tree can be 100 feet high and have a foot in the ground. Think about the comparison of that. 100 feet in the air, only a foot in the ground. And so that explains to you why they do topple over when a storm comes. Because when a storm does show up on them, it's because they're so rigid that they actually resist the storm. And because they resist it so much, it ends up toppling them over. And so the reason why David is actually writing about a palm tree, he said, because the characteristics of a palm tree are this. A palm tree is not really a tree. It's actually grass. Some of y'all didn't know that. It's actually grass. It can still burn as a piece of wood, but it's actually grass. There's over 2,500 different variations of palm trees. Palm trees, coconut trees, fig trees, date trees, they're all the same tree line. They're all palms. But one thing that you have to understand about palms is this, is that when they are planted in the right area, their roots go down three feet. Not only do they go down three feet, they spread from the source. And so when they spread from the source, if, there can, if there's other palm trees within the area, they connect with the other palm trees. So, Tyson, come here. Stop writing. Come here. So, I'm a palm tree. She's a palm tree. And so when we grow together, we connect together. So if she leans, I lean with her, but I'm supporting her. When I lean, she leans with me, but she's supporting me up. That's what their root system does underground. So that's the reason why when storms do come, when you see them on the tropical, thank you, when you see them in Florida, when you see them on the tropical areas, everything like that, they blowing back and forth. That's the one tree that you probably won't see flying across your TV screen because of how they're anchored in the ground. God is saying, this is how I need you to be anchored. When you go into 2020, you're trying to get this vision. You cannot develop your vision without connecting with people. If you try to connect your vision, if you try to start your vision and isolate yourself from people, all you have is a dream. 
everybody in here that has a vision is connected with people. You need people in your life to help fulfill your vision. And so the palm tree is trying to show us is that when we allow ourselves to be planted in the right area, you have resources coming. You're producing fruit because your anchor is deep enough, but not only deep enough, but you're connected to other people that can help you. Just as Pastor Blue said on Wednesday night about the three tribes that God will always send in the battle first, he said he was send Issachar, Judah, and uh, Zebulun. Because Issachar was basically, they were uh, the discerners. Zebulun were the financiers. Judah were the praisers. They were connected together. All 12 of Israel were broken up into four groups that were connected to each other. That made them strong. That's why we always talk about when the worst thing that you can do or the worst thing that we can do as a ministry or even within your family is when you have infighting. Because you tear up from the inside what shouldn't have been there. One of the greatest tactics in all of war is basically allow them to tear themselves up from the inside. Because the more we attack them from the outside, the stronger they come together. Because everybody in here, have, you've got brothers and sisters and family and everything. If somebody attacked one of your brothers or your sisters, everybody coming. You ain't got to have no questions. You don't even know what the situation is. All you know, you fight it. I don't care what it is. They may be in the wrong, but hey, a fight going on, hey, we'll figure all that out later. But right now, we about to fight. And we bond together. But the problem occurs is when we start fighting each other. Because now we know intimate details of each other. And we use those as nuclear or, or, or uh, weapons of mass destruction. And now families ain't talking for years. But when somebody from the outside attacked us, we were good. But when we attacked each other from the inside, we end up killing the source. And so that's why it's so important as we go through, even for your individual life, as us as a church family, we are, are a combination of families coming together as one. We're here to connect with each other. That's what we're here for. But the other thing that I like about palm trees, Jemiah, come here. <laughs> Kenny, come here. Yeah, Jemiah's going to be my palm tree. Hold it. <laughs> I'm button your suit. Kenny is my wind. So, so, is my stand up there in the front? <laughs> Come on up. Hold your arms out to the side. Hold your arms out to the side. Don't hold them by the waist. Just get them up. Hold them up under here. So, the one thing that I like about what David was doing by the palm tree is this, is that not only are the, the roots are anchored into the ground, they're connected to each other. If there's other palm tree groves around, they're all interlocked with each other. But the other thing that I love about this that I found out as I was studying about palm trees is this, is that when the wind starts blowing, so lean them to the left and the right, when the wind starts blowing, what a palm tree does is that it will lift up its branches to the sky. The reason why it's doing that is because it's surrendering itself to the wind. And so it's no different than what God is telling us. He says, when you lift your arms, when you lift your arms, that's a sign of submission. That's a sign of surrender. That's the reason why when we lift our arms, God saying lift your arm. That's even why, it, even though it, it's strange, when police officers say lift your arms, put your arms in the air, it shows a sign of surrender to a higher authority over you. So what God is saying, God even demonstrated that into a palm. He said, even if a palm tree can do it, you can do it. And so when his arms is in the air or his branches, it becomes less wind resistant. 
And so it's able to lean with the wind. It's no different than if you ever watch boxing. They always talk about lean with the punch. Because if you don't lean with the punch and they actually connect, they're going to knock you out. Now, you might still get hit, but it's not going to hurt as much. Put the palms down. Put the <laughs> so he thought I'm a, my visual so while this palm has his branches in the air and it's swaying back and forth the one thing that it also does that a lot of us have to get into the, to the understanding of doing as well is that whatever branch or leaf that is not producing anything it lets it go. That's the reason why you can go down to Florida, you can go to Mexico, you go to any tropical area, you'll see branches all over the place. You don't see too many palm trees laying around. Because the palm tree has been built or created by God to when, when the wind does come, it won't hold on to those things that will have it topple over. So whatever relationship that's in your life that's holding you back, whatever issue that you have in your life that is holding you back, God said, I'm trying to get you to let it go. So what I will do, I will let a storm come up in your life. You think it's the enemy. God said, no, the enemy ain't got nothing to do with this. We've been trained for so long that every time something comes up in our life that we don't like, that it's the enemy. We don't blame so much stuff on the enemy. God said, no. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Matter of fact, he can't do nothing to you unless I allow him to do it. So if he does show up, and we're putting ourselves on a high pedestal to even say that, but if we are influenced or affected by his result, he said it was still me that allowed him to do it. Because I see something in you that I need for you to let go. That's what the storm does. Because you got to understand, oak trees, palm trees, both receive the same storm. It just depends on how they're made, what's going to show up. A lot of us have been living our life like oak trees, and we've been toppled over. But in this year, 2020, thank you. In this year, 2020, God is saying, look, I need to accelerate you to a new level. And the only way that I can do that is that I got to blow away some of the stuff that is useless in your life right now. And I don't mean this. I don't want you to go back and think about, oh, he's someone like, oh, a person is useless. No. Maybe the influence that they have over your life. Not necessarily the person. The person can be redeemed if they want to. But this is really talking about you internally. Because we are our biggest threats. No one can do more harm to you than you can do to yourself. So God is saying, I have to allow you to go through a storm. Because there will be storms that come up in 2020 that are going to make you want to quit. It may be when they hit you by the end of this week. But God is saying, look, I need you to make sure that you're planted deeply. Because it doesn't matter how many good sermons you hear, how many great notes you take, doesn't matter how many times you run around, slide across the floor, shout, dance, whatever that, if you're not planted, when that storm comes, you won't have enough strength to be able to lean with the wind. Because you got to understand, the thing I like about palms, when we went to Cancun for the church trip at the hotel that we were standing at, there was one palm tree leaning almost at a 90 degree angle, but it was still there. It didn't fall over. And I like that. Because we have to understand, even though I might come out of that storm a little cricket, I'm still upright. I may have some branches that flew away. You may look a little crazy. Your hair may be all over your head, but you still here. 
You'd rather have your hair all over your head and you leaning crooked than being completely on the ground. So that's where God is trying to get us into in 2020. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. So the takeaway that we have for this says the decisions we make this year are pivotal, not only for 2020, but for this decade. Therefore, in this year of the accelerated vision, he needs for us to be planted in our rightful place. A storm will come and test how grounded you are. But do not worry how far you lean. Just know you'll pop right back up. As we stated time and time again, God is doing something different here in CYM. What he's showing pastor, what he's laying out for this ministry as a whole is to get us to where God needs us to be. And see why I'm, I'm, I'm asking you as you go throughout this year, understand you have to know where you should be planted at. That goes for your ministry. That goes for what you're trying to do in your career, at your job, if you're trying to start a business, what you're trying to develop in your family. You have to make sure where do, does God need me to be planted at? And when you find out what that is, then you need to start connecting with people that have the same like mind as you. That is trying to reach those things that God is trying to get to. Because some of us are further along in certain areas and God may have us connect with each other. Because you may need a little bit of support to get over a couple of homes. But then for the ones that are a little bit further ahead, sometimes God can use that to kind of show us, hey, don't get too big of yourself. Because just look beside you, this is where I brought you from. Because every level that you're trying to get to, somebody's already been there. You will never get to a point in your life where you know everything. So allow God to do what he needs to do in us in this year. I'm not even talking about the last decade. Don't allow your 2020 to be like 2019. If you know that God was trying to do something with you last year and you fought it, you got toppled over. This year, he said, look, I'm not trying to run over you. But if you want to stay in the area that you are, cool. You'll be the big tree in a small pot. And you will never know your full potential. So for some of us, it's going to have to cause us to get out of our comfort zones. Me included. And so as we go through this year, please, when God speaks to you, stop and listen. It may not come at the time that you think it's going to come. It may be 3, 4 o'clock in the morning dreams because he knows that's when you ain't talking. God talks more when you don't talk. So as we go through 2020, as we go through this year, as we go through this week, please understand everything that he has for you is inside of you already. So bow your heads real quick. Just as we did earlier today, Minister Clark stood up here and gave the offer for salvation. We had two people who received salvation on today. So from last Sunday to this past Wednesday to today, we've had over 20 people receive salvation. So as everybody's head is bowed and eyes is closed, I'm the only one looking. 
you're here today and you want to receive salvation, you saw how easy it was. All we ask for you is just to raise your hand in the air. You slip it right back down. The only reason why we ask that is so I can be in agreement with you and we pray together as a family. So if that's you today, if you want to receive salvation, because the only way that you truly are going to be planted is that you got to have him first. So if that's you today, all I'm asking for you to do is just slip your hand in the air and place it right back down. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be here on today, to worship with each other, to give you honor back unto you. We thank you for those souls that will receive salvation on today. And right now, I pray for and every last person in this building that what you have for us in 2020 allow us to reach those goals our vision should be bigger than us so if it's still focusing on us allow us to change it so that it's generational so God as we get ready to leave out of here today angels go before us protect us as we go back and forth we pray for our pastor who is recovering over his illness that you restore him that you strengthen him and we thank you for all these things in your blessed son Jesus name amen amen good day I love y'all make sure that y'all visit everybody in the back for Change Cafe and we see y'all on Wednesday